اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لیسن نمبر 106 سورة التوبہ آیا نمبر 53 قل سے انفقو all of you spend طوعاً willingly او کرہن or unwillingly however you spend لَن يُتَقَبَّلَ مِنْكُمْ Never will it be accepted from you. Why? Because إِنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ قَوْمًا فَاسِقِينَ Indeed, you have been a defiantly disobedient people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says over here, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is being addressed, that قُلْ You say, to who? To the hypocrites, to the munafiqoon. Because in the previous ayat, who was being mentioned? The munafiqoon. And the excuses that they had presented do not go out in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not go out for the expedition of Tabuk. At the time of the battle of Tabuk, the Prophet sallallahu encouraged the Muslims to spend a lot. Why? Because the journey was long. There were many people. And obviously the resources needed were also many. And for that, everyone was encouraged to spend in the way of Allah. And the Sahaba did. We learn that Al-Jad ibn Qais, who was he? He was a munafiq. When he said to the Prophet ﷺ that I cannot go along with you to fight the Romans because everybody knows how much I love women and I will not be able to remain patient upon seeing women of the Romans because I have heard that they are very beautiful. So please don't put me into fitna and don't make me go over there. So he said, that since I am not going to go, instead I am going to contribute financially. You understand? So he was trying to display righteousness and sincerity. That look, I am being so honest. I am being so sincere. I don't want to commit any sin. But at the same time, I support you. I support your cause. Therefore, I am going to contribute financially. This was all a display. This was all for the purpose of show off. He just wanted to impress the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims. So over here the Prophet ﷺ is told, say to the hypocrites that Anfiku, go ahead and spend, whether you spend Tawan willingly, Aukarhan or unwillingly. Tawan is from the root letters Ta Wain. From the word Ita'a. What does Ita'a mean? Obedience. And tawr is to obey willingly. To obey happily. To do something that a person is obligated with. How? Happily. Willingly. Without any hesitation. Without any dislike. So spend willingly. Meaning, spend willingly, happily. And secondly, spend in obedience. In obedience to who? To Allah. Meaning spend where you are required to spend. Where you are obligated to spend. So Tawan has two meanings. What are they? First of all, willingly. And secondly, in obedience. Where it is compulsory for you to spend. In various avenues of bid, of khayr. Like for example, Jihad Fi Sabilillah. The Muslims were going for the battle for the expedition to spend over there. Or spend on the poor and the needy. Go ahead, spend. Even if it's a cat that you're giving. Go ahead. Do it willingly. Aw karahan or unwillingly. Karahan is from the root letters kaf ha. And what does karh mean? When a person finds something hateful, disgusting, he doesn't like it. And when he's forced to do it, how will he do it? Unwillingly. With reluctance. Grudgingly. With hesitation. And the word kurh kaf raha but with a dhamma on the kaf is also from the same root and what does kurh mean? hardship to find something difficult generally what do we dislike doing? what we find difficult what we find hard when you find something hard you don't want to do it so spend willingly or unwillingly what does it mean by karhan? why would a hypocrite spend unwillingly? That when he is spending only to please people And he does not want to part from his wealth 
Why is he giving his wealth and why is he giving it in the way of Allah? Just to satisfy people, just to please people, just to impress them so that they don't say anything to him. So spend willingly or unwillingly, لَن يُتَقَبَّلَ minkum. It will never be accepted from you. Allah will never accept your spending in the way of Allah. Why? Because إِنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ قَوْمًا fasiqin. Indeed you have been a defiantly disobedient people. What does fisq mean? To cross the limits. So what are the limits that are being crossed over here? Of iman, of decency, of truthfulness, of sincerity. That what kind of excuses were these people presenting in order to stay back from the battle of the book? This is clear fisq. So because you have been a defiantly disobedient people, therefore your charities are not going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 27, we learn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah accepts only from who? From those who have taqwa. When there was the argument between the two sons of Adam alayhi salam, Habil and Qabil, one of them said that Allah only accepts from who? Those who have taqwa. So when a person does something good, he should have good intention. He should do it willingly. But is that sufficient? Is that enough for the good deed to be accepted? No. It is not sufficient. What else is required? That a person should otherwise abstain from sin. Because if otherwise a person is involved in committing sins, in crossing the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that becomes a means of preventing his deeds from being accepted. Generally, what do we think? That only you should have a good intention. You should have a good heart. And if you really mean well, then your deeds will be accepted. But we see that is not enough. What else is required? That otherwise also a person should abstain from disobeying Allah. Because if a person's nature is disobedience, and just once in a while he does something good, are you going to care about the good that he does? No. What are you going to consider that person? To be disobedient. You're not going to appreciate the good that they're doing. Why? Because generally their behavior is of disobedience. So we see that just as good deeds, they erase bad deeds. Similarly, sins, what do they do? They erase good deeds. That even if a person is giving sadaqah willingly, even if a person is giving sadaqah willingly, happily, with sincerity, still it's not going to be accepted. Why? Because his sins, what are they doing? They're erasing his good deeds. His good deed of sadaqah, it is being erased by what? His other sins that he is committing. So we see that sadaqah is a good deed, and not just sadaqah, but other good deeds, when they are done along with sins, then those good deeds don't carry any value. Do you understand? They don't carry any value. They're not accepted. We learned in Surah Al-Baqarah, لا تبطلوا صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى A person gives sadaqah and he follows it by man and adha, reminding the favors. Is that sadaqah accepted? No. Although the sin came afterwards, and that came and invalidated the good deed. However, in this case, the sin is coming before the good deed. Even that is hindering the good deed from being accepted. Just as when a person, if he eats haram, he earns haram, and then he goes and makes dua, is his dua going to be accepted? No. It's not. Similarly, if a person goes to a soothsayer trying to learn about the future, he goes and shows his hand to a palmist, then what's going to happen? Are his good deeds going to be accepted? No. Not for the next little while. They're not going to be accepted. So we see that sins, they prevent good deeds from being accepted. Even if a person performs those good deeds with a lot of good intention, they will still carry no weight. وَمَا مَنَعَهُمْ أَن تُقْبَلَ مِنْهُمْ نَفَقَاتُهُمْ And what prevents their expenditures from being accepted? إِلَّا أَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَبِرَسُولِهِ Except that they have disbelieved in Allah and in His Messenger. 
So what's the first reason as to why their sadaqat are not accepted? Because they have disbelieved in Allah and His Messenger. وَمَا مَنَعَهُمْ Manara is from the root letters مِيم نُونَ عَيْنَ مَنْ What does manar mean? To stop, to restrain, to hold something back, to not let go. So when they gave their sadaqat, when they give in charity, what is it that prevents that charity from being accepted? مَا مَنَعَهُمْ أَن تُقْبَلَ مِنْهُمْ نَفَقَاتُهُمْ Nafaqat is a plural of nafaqa. And nafaqa is from the root letters nun faqa. Nafaqa is that which is spent. Remember we did this word earlier in Surah Al-Baqarah? وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَةٍ أَوْ نَذَرْتُمْ مِنْ نَذْرٍ So nafaqa is that which a person spends. That which is spent. It could be Something that a person spends to fulfill his needs. He's buying groceries. He's buying clothes. It could be what a person spends to fulfill the needs of other people. For example, a person is buying for his friends or buying for the poor. It could be charity. It could be zakat. So basically, anything that is spent for whatever cause. That's not the concern. Nafaqa is what? That which is spent. And over here, nafaqat gives the meaning of sadaqat. That when they give in the way of Allah, when they spend in the way of Allah, what is it that prevents their charities from being accepted? That annahum kafaru billahi wa bi rasulihi. They have done kufr of Allah and His Messenger. They have denied them. Now a person might say that the munafiqun they say, amanna. Isn't it? The hypocrites they say, we have believed. And at the same time, they would also come and pray salah in the masjid with the Muslims. Isn't that a sign of somebody being a Muslim? Yes. So what does it mean by أَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَبِرَسُولِهِ What's their kufr referring to? That through their statements and their actions, what have they demonstrated? Kufr. By the words they say, by the actions they do, they have demonstrated kufr. In the following ayat, we will see as to how they used to insult the Prophet ﷺ and say negative things about him on his face. Doubt his justice. And they would spread doubts among people as well. This is what? Kufr. Kufr of Allah and His Messenger. Similarly, the hypocrites, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are not true in their iman. They say that we are believers, but in reality, وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ so the first reason behind their deeds not being accepted is that they have done kufr. Secondly, وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ And they do not come to the salah, meaning they do not come to perform the salah, إِلَّا except وَهُمْ kusala. Well, they are very lazy. They come to salah very lazily. When it comes to performing an obligation, they are extremely lazy. Extremely sluggish, extremely lethargic. Kusala is a plural of kaslan. And kaslan is from the root letters kaf, seen, lam. What does kaslan mean? Kaslan. One who is lazy. We have done this word before as well. Kaslan is one who is lazy. And kaslan, fa'lan, just as the word shaytan. Or atshan. Ghadban. Remember غضبان Musa alayhi salam came back غضبان What does غضبان mean? Extremely angry Rahman Extremely merciful So كسلان What does it mean? Extremely lazy Extremely lazy And kasal Is to be lazy With regards to something That a person should not be lazy in it does not suit a person that he should be lazy with regards to that matter. Some things you can avoid. Some things you can delay. You can do them lazily. It's no big deal. Like for example, if you're washing dishes, no big deal. If you're vacuuming the floor, no big deal if you do it lazily. Because after all, it's only a floor. It's only dishes. But when it comes to salah, when it comes to meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praying to Him, thanking Him, a person comes lazily, this is not appropriate. 
This is not correct. So, وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كُسَالَ They do not come to salah except while they are lazy. Meaning, they don't want to pray at all. They have no desire to pray salah. They have no desire to pray salah. They want to avoid it as much as they can. And they only pray to satisfy people. They have no interest in salah. They only pray to satisfy people. Because if they don't pray, then people are going to question their iman. And when they do pray, their heart is not involved in it at all. They only pray because they have to. They must. They're not interested in salah. Their heart is not involved. They have no khushur. While they pray, they don't hope for any reward for that salah. And they don't fear any punishment for leaving the salah, for not praying the salah properly. وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كُسَالَ Another reason as to why their sadaqat are not accepted. وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَ And they do not spend إِلَّا وَهُمْ كَارِهُونَ Except while they are ones who dislike. Meaning they dislike spending in the way of Allah. Because they consider it as a burden. They consider it as a fine, as a tax that they have to pay. They don't like to give sadaqa. They don't like to spend in the way of Allah. So when someone gives you something, and you find out later on that they gave you unwillingly, they didn't want to give it to you, they were forced to give it to you, do you like it? What do you want to do? Just return it to them. So if they are giving sadaqa in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dislikingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghani. He is the king of kings. He is not needy of their sadaqa. He is not needy of their contributions, of their donations. They can keep it with themselves. So Allah does not accept their sadaqat at all. Why? Because they only spend unwillingly. They only spend with dislike. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ طَيِّبٌ لَا يَقْبَلُ إِلَّا طَيِّبًا Allah is طَيِّب and He only accepts what? That which is طَيِّب. So what is طَيِّب? That which is clean and good in itself and also that which is given in a good way. And when a person does not give it with his heart, willingly, then what will he choose to give? What will he choose to give? Something that is طَيِّب or something that is cheap? Something that's not worth anything. So, وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كَارِهُونَ So what do we learn in these two ayat? That there are some conditions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed, that Allah has set for the acceptance of a person's good deeds. Over here, yes, it's nafaqat only that are mentioned. However, this is general. That when a person does anything, when a person performs a good deed, then a person must fulfill some conditions. And if he does not, then his good deed will not be accepted. It will not carry any weight. What are those conditions? What are those prerequisites? First of all, Iman. First of all, Iman. Because over here what has been mentioned? They're kufr. So if a person does not have Iman, if a person does not have correct iman, then no matter what he does, even if he performs the greatest of good deeds, those good deeds do not carry any weight. They do not carry any weight. They will not bring him any reward. All those good deeds are wasted. Why? Because when a person does not have iman, he is denying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is denying the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the greatest form of ingratitude. Just imagine if there is a child who is ungrateful towards his parents. Extremely ungrateful, extremely disobedient. So he grows up and he becomes highly educated and very successful. Will the parents still be happy with him? Will they be happy about his success? No. Why? Because he has been extremely ungrateful and extremely disobedient. So no matter what he does, even if he becomes extremely successful, his success does not matter to them. They don't care at all about his success. They have disowned him. Similarly, if there is a person who rejects Allah, who rejects his messenger, 
and he goes on doing good deeds, spending in the way of Allah, are those good deeds going to be accepted? No. Are his charities going to be accepted? No. And besides, he never did them for the sake of Allah. He never did them for the sake of Allah. So why should Allah reward him? He never did it for the Akhirah. He never did it to please Allah. So why should Allah reward him? Because we always wonder, there are so many people, they're so charitable, they're so generous, they take care of the poor and the needy. So how can Allah not reward them in the hereafter? He will not, if they didn't do that with Iman. Because they did not do it for Allah. They did not do it as Allah wanted them to. And otherwise, if they disobey Allah, if they reject Him, their deeds are not going to be accepted. Just recently, I visited this website on which they have this uh, very good system of that you contribute some money. You make an account basically, even if you give $5, $20, whatever you want to give. They will find someone who needs that money. For example, somewhere in, let's say, Africa. A man, he wants to start his business and he needs a total of $200. You give 20, another person gives 20, another person gives 20, another person gives 100. Eventually he will have 200, they will give that $200 to that man. He will use that money and within 2-3 years he will return it. There is a particular time limit. I thought it was a very good system. However, there is interest involved. Therefore, I stayed away from it. And that's why I don't encourage you to go for it either because they charge interest from the people who take that loan. Anyway, I was looking at that when you become a member, you have to join a particular group. There were different, different groups. There was no group of Muslims, obviously. But there was groups of Christians, of atheists, of Canadians, of Australians. And I was looking at the past few months' activities. You know who was number one? Atheists. Number one. Atheists. They were the ones who were giving the most money. Millions of dollars they were giving, collectively. And I was thinking, look at these people, they're giving, why? For the sake of humanity, to help other people. Yes, it's a very good thing. You're helping the poor people. You're helping them establish their businesses, to get education, to have a good life. All of that. It's a good cause. However, if a person is not giving it for the sake of Allah, then why would Allah reward him? If he rejects Allah's existence even, why would Allah reward him? So why is it that so many Muslims stand up for such people and they say, no, Allah should definitely reward them. They should definitely go to paradise in the hereafter. The fact is, they never did it for Allah. They don't have iman. Allah will not reward them. Allah is just. Allah is tayyib and He only accepts that which is tayyib. Another condition which we learn from these ayat that a person must fulfill in order for his good deeds to be accepted is what? Ita'ah, obedience. Which we learned in the first ayat. That a person should be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just iman but also obedience. If a person turns away from one good deed, if he rejects one good deed, if he disobeys Allah with regards to one matter, then that would become a means of preventing his other good deeds to be accepted as well. One good deed is a means of acceptance of another good deed. Like for example, we learn that good words, al kalimu tayyib good words, what do they do? They ascend good deeds. Meaning, good deeds and good words together they ascend up to the heavens, meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance. So good deeds together become a means of acceptance. But if a person does not obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala generally, then his occasional sadaqah, his occasional kind gesture, will not carry any weight. Like for example, there is a prisoner. There is a person who's committed great crimes. Let's say he went and robbed a store. Where does he deserve to go? Behind the jail. But he says, no, no, I robbed the store. However, I also gave charity. Are you going to care about his charity? No. Because the crime that he has committed outweighs the good that he has done. It outweighs the good that he has done. It's more serious. It's much greater. 
Similarly, if we are involved in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one day after the other, one thing after the other, one sin after the other, then how do we expect that our good deeds are going to be accepted? How? This is something that we must think about, we must reflect upon, that if we are involved in committing fisk, in disobeying Allah, then how do we expect that our good deeds will be accepted? Thirdly, another condition is promptly performing the obligations. Promptly performing the obligations, not delaying them unnecessarily. And not just promptly, but also eagerly. Because you see, two things have been mentioned. That when they go to salah, they pray salah how? Lazily. They don't pray promptly, immediately. They delay. They procrastinate. For no genuine reason. They have no interest. And when it comes to giving the zakat, which is also an obligation, how do they do it? With dislike. So if a person is also performing good deeds, but he delays, he performs them lazily, and he performs them with dislike, then again, his good deeds are not going to be accepted. His good deeds are not going to carry any weight. We learn in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 45, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ And indeed, salat, it is difficult except for who? Except for those who have khushur. Except for those who are humble. Those who are fearful. So unless and until a person has fear of Allah, unless and until a person is humble before Allah, his good deeds are not going to be accepted. Why? Because his heart is not going to be involved in them. He's not doing it willingly. And when something is not done willingly, then Allah does not care about that action. Because he is ghani, he is the king of kings, he doesn't need our actions that are performed with dislike, with grudges, with hatred, for the good deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated us with.